Five Watt World is supported in part by TrueFire. Learn, practice, and play with TrueFire. Keith Williams. Welcome to 5 Watt World, where we're interested in helping you get the most music from the least gear. From the time that man marveled at their voice coming back to them across the canyon or from a cave wall, we've been fascinated by echo. In early music, repeated musical phrases emulated this phenomenon. When humans began recording music, early pioneers like Les Paul experimented with the sounds we'd later come to call delay. By running multiple tape machines, one recording and the other playing back, he was able to play along with phrases he'd just played himself. Echo quickly became a desirable effect in the recording studio. Then miniaturizing the multiple tape decks into dedicated tape delays like the Maestro Echoplex and the Roland Space Echo brought portability to the effect. The sound of a tape echo became part of our musical history, something we knew and began to expect in popular music. But that all changed with the advent of integrated circuit chips in the mid-1970s, and the Deluxe Memory Man was at the cutting edge of this brave new world. So if you'd like to know the story of one of the very first delay pedals to leave its mark on modern music, stay tuned, because this is the 5 Watt World short history of the Electroharmonics Deluxe Memory Man. If you enjoy our videos, make sure to subscribe, and if you've already subscribed, use the link to grab a t-shirt or a stomp box preset pack to support what we do. Or to become a bigger part of 5 Watt World, sign up for the Friends of 5 Watt on Patreon. The links are in the description. Electra Harmonics was founded in New York City by rhythm and blues keyboardist Mike Matthews. Their first products included the Axis Fuzz and the Linear Power Booster, or LPB-1, launched in 1969. That same year, they would launch the Big Muff Pie. Compared to the popular fuzz face, the Big Muff was a bassier fuzz pedal and was used by David Gilmour of Pink Floyd and many, many others later on. Tape delay machines have their own unique magic, but that magic, as it often does, comes at a high price. In this case, maintenance of what is essentially a fancy tape recorder running for hours at a time. So nearly as soon as tape delays became common, manufacturers were looking for ways to make a delay unit more reliable, smaller, and less expensive. In the mid-1970s, a new type of chip technology called Bucket Brigade, or BBDs for short, was the answer. A bucket brigade chip includes a large number of capacitors and transistors clocked at a high rate, where stored voltages are passed from one stage to the next, evoking the image of buckets of water being passed down the line in an old-fashioned firefighting method. As these are analog stages, the length of possible stages are generally powers of 2, 512, 1024, or 2048. There were a number of different chips available, and the earliest Memory Man pedals, which did not have the Deluxe moniker, used Reticon's SAD1024 chips. This would later change to the more often seen Panasonic MN3005 chip. Much like copies of photocopies, as the signal is passed from one stage to the next, it degrades slightly, and this happens to emulate the sort of delays you would get from a tape delay, especially one with well-worn tape. This helps an analog bucket brigade delay stay out of the way of the main signal by being progressively darker and quieter as they fade away. This was part of the magic of the bucket brigade delay, especially the earlier units. The Memory Man was a whole new thing, made possible by these bucket brigade chips. These chips allowed for phase, chorus, and flanging effects to be built as well, all seen from electroharmonics following the delay. The first Memory Man was released in, by electroharmonics in 1976. Though certainly not exactly like a tape delay, the Memory Man's sound was an immediate and huge success among guitarists. With the introduction of the fifth generation of the pedal in 1980, the Deluxe Memory Man, they'd added an LFO, or Low Frequency Oscillator, to slowly shift the delay times, thus slightly fluctuating the pitch of the repeats. This pitch variation mimicked the wow and flutter of the mechanical tape and drum delays of the time. You could also turn the delay level and feedback to a minimum and use the Deluxe Memory Man for just these chorus or vibrato effects. The modulation level was adjustable and that too was new as the original wound flutter of the tape delay was a byproduct of the age of the tape and the wear and tear on the mechanism, not a design choice. 
A control knob was added to regulate the amount of modulation, and a switch on the back of the pedal allowed for switching between chorus and vibrato modulation modes. The other important addition to the Deluxe Memory Man was a level knob that let you control the level of the internal preamp boosting the signal. Delay pedals use a preamp to send subsignal to the part of the circuit that repeats the signal. Many players had used the preamp section of older tape echo machines to help push the front of their amplifiers or otherwise shape their tone. The preamp of the Echoplex was so beloved in this use that there is now a proliferation of pedals that have just this preamp on the market. The Deluxe Memory Man has an op-amp preamp to lift the signal, but it is not particularly revered for its tone. So being able to control the amount of color it imparts in the signal path is important. There was also an overload light to indicate when the preamp was being pushed too hard. And one of the quirks of the original unit is that the preamp is always in your signal path, even when the pedal is not turned on. This is why most modern users of the vintage pedals, people like Eric Johnson, have it in a loop where they can take it completely out of their signal chain when it's not in use. I have the choice of either having the stereo course on or not. I want one extra wetness I'll put on this uh, deluxe memory man. I reached out to TrueFire to be my sponsor because I've used them for years. With over 2 million users worldwide, whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced level player, TrueFire has lessons to enhance and inspire your playing. Get 35% off courses using the promo code 5 watt 35 or like I do, sign up for the All Access Pass to use the entire TrueFire catalog. I really like TrueFire, and I think if you give them a shot, you'll like them too. I'd like to thank TrueFire for their support in making this video. The other three controls had been on the pedal since the first version. Blend, which controlled the mix of the dry and affected signal. The pedal also had echo and direct outputs, so you could separate the two audio lines. Feedback controls the number of repeats. Cranked all the way up, the pedal willingly goes into auto oscillation and accounts for many Deluxe Memory Man users kneeling on darkened stages mid-tune to fiddle the knobs to great effect. The original maximum delay time can be quite variable, but originally it was targeted at about 300 milliseconds. I say about because like all the pedals, there is a variation in components from one to the next, and electroharmonics pedals had especially wide ranges. As a result, each pedal functions and sounds slightly different, and this includes the specifics of possible delay time. Everything from these dreamy longer delays to shorter rockabilly slapback are possible here. Using even shorter delay times, coupled with the chorus vibrato knobs, could yield wonderful reverb-like effects as well. The original units has an AC cord that then the internal voltage was stepped down from a 120 AC wall voltage to 24 volts DC. There was an on-off switch and an indicator light to show when the pedal was on. The Deluxe Memory Man was used throughout the early 80s as one of the most cost and space effective solutions to putting delay at the feet of guitarists. U2's album War was released in 1983 and it displays the early love affair between the band's guitarist The Edge and the Deluxe Memory Man. His innovation of using a dotted eighth note delay revolutionized the way delay would be used to create vast landscapes of sound. And then we have a Deluxe Memory Man which also has become a big part of my sound especially after working on Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark. This is a true story. Edge, not on this board because it was a different one at the time, he got down and changed the settings for me. He said, here's what you should do for this. I thought, you're literally Edge actually touching a memory man, a vintage one, to give me the setting? Are you kidding? He taught me exactly how to do the dotted eight thing. And the, the trick is the mix needs to be a lot higher and the repeat should be two to three at the most. So my setting is very watery. So I, I have this sort of setting. But basically you play eighth notes while having a dotted eighth delay. So I go. And that's not a great part, but you get the idea. By the time U2 was recording Joshua Tree in 1986, the Edge had moved on to using a rack mount at TC Electronics 2290 or a Korg SDD 3000 delay. Other famous users that used or still use a Deluxe Memory Man in their rig include Robert Smith of The Cure, Ed O'Brien from Radiohead, Andy Timmons. To me, the uh, Electroharmonics Deluxe Memory Man. Chris Cornell from Soundgarden and Audio Slave, and Neil Finn of Crowded House. But also in 1980, Maxon was producing the AD80 analog delay under the Ibanez brand. 
And in 1983, the Boss brought out the DM2 delay that would also use the Panasonic MN3005 chip. Both pedals could create many of the same tones of the Deluxe Remy Man, albeit without modulation, but in a form factor that was one-third the size. The Deluxe Memory Man had some real competition. Even in the late 70s, when I began to learn about pedals, electroharmonics pedals were beginning to be seen as second tier. Their one-time innovative folded metal chassis began to look like metal shop projects compared to a Boss or MXR pedal of the time. And so it was that electroharmonics stopped making effects pedals in the mid-1980s. The company regrouped, and by the early 90s, they had begun selling vacuum tubes rebranded for use in guitar amplifiers. This was their primary business for many years. But as so often happens, the shiny old boxes had begun to come into a greater demand on the used market. The early pedals were seen by this new group of musicians as having some of the late 70s and early 80s magic dust of their heroes, and they became desirable again. So like the good entrepreneur that he always was, Mike Matthews and company began reissuing their original designs by the mid-90s. And one of the first pedals to be introduced was the Deluxe Memory Man. Electroharmonics has gone on to issue almost countless versions of the Memory Man, now in all shapes and sizes. There have been far too many modern versions over the years to cover here. But the bottom line is that they're always chasing the imperfect magic of the original. This video isn't intended to be a catalog of all the copies that are out there, but there are pedals that have come out recently that I think are worth mentioning. First is the new nano-sized Deluxe Memory Man from Electroharmonics. Not only did they fit the original features into a more standard sized pedal, they've added new features as well. The new one has a depth control that wasn't found on the original. The depth is controlling the amount of modulation that is being added to the signal, emulating everything from a recently maintained tape machine to one that's wobbling all over the place. The new pedal also has two internal switches for having the preamp always on like the original or making it true bypassed. The other switch controls whether the echo tails continue when the pedal is switched off. It has up to 550 milliseconds of delay time, nearly double that of the original, and of course, it comes in this new nano size instead of the original, which would now be seen as a real estate hog on a modern pedal board. J-Rocket Clockwork Echo created quite a stir when it was released in the summer of 2021. 
Not least of which because it was designed in conjunction with the designer of the original Deluxe Memory Man, Howard Davis. There are a lot more control features on this pedal than the original. Like some other modern analog delays, they've figured out how to add tap tempo. You could also control the speed and depth of the modulation here. You can even turn the modulation on and off with a foot switch. It's also possible to control the time and repeats via an expression pedal. The pedal's mono in, but has true stereo output. The only downside of this pedal is that, like the original, it doesn't have a bypass option to get the preamp out of the signal path, so you might want to run it in a loop like you would a vintage unit. Created in conjunction with Robert Keeley and his team, this pedal was created to capture the sound of not one, but two Deluxe Memory Man style delays running at the same time. Years ago, Andy Timmons traveled with two vintage Deluxe Memory Man pedals on his board. From there, he transitioned to using a Strymon timeline that was doing a digital emulation of the two modulated delays. But he always felt that the timeline was overkill and took up way more space than what it was used for. So when he was at the NAMM show a couple of years ago, he turned to his friends Dan and Mick from that pedal show for a recommendation of who to work with to design the dual delay of his dreams. They immediately walked him over to Robert Keeley's booth. The form factor of the pedal that they came up with, along with the amount of processing power, is pretty incredible. Andy is almost always running this dual delay sound in his signal chain. Specifically, it's a dotted eighth delay along with a quarter note delay. Andy is quick to credit David Gilmore with this idea. The way these end up interacting creates a sound evocative of reverb, which makes sense given that reverb itself is generated by sound bouncing off objects and returning to the listener. There's also just the amount of modulation that Andy loves, where the repeats slowly fade into a slightly detuned wash, or halo, as the name of the pedal implies. The pedal has multiple other delay presets accessible from the front, including the Tom Scholl's double echo of 300 and 500 milliseconds. The default tone that's on the pedal is Andy's main setting, so you have Timmons' delay right out of the box, if not his fingers and his melodic sense. And I'd be remiss if I didn't slide in a mention for the Deluxe Memory Man model that I most often use, the one in the Line 6 world. It's what you're hearing John Cordy play on the intro and outro of the video. It's incredibly accurate and very tweakable. Thanks for watching until the end. If you haven't already, click the like button and subscribe. If I forgot your favorite Deluxe Memory Man player, leave it in the comments for everyone to enjoy. Until next time, thanks for being a part of the 5 Watt World. Thank you.